Hey everybody, this is Mark Ramon, and you are listening to Loudwire. Hey everybody, it's Guru Hamid here from Loudwire, and as you can see to my left, the drummer of obviously the great Ramones. Hi. <laughs> also Dust, uh, Richard Hell, and Marky Ramones Blitzkrieg. Yes. And he makes one hell of a pasta sauce. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Marky Ramon, thank you so much for your time thank today. You. Thanks a lot. So you've got so many exciting projects happening right now. And I think one thing that really got me amped up is this tour that you're going to do with Andrew W.K. Yeah. Uh, fronting Marky Ramon's Blitzkrieg. You're going to go all over the world playing you know, 30-plus Ramon songs. Uh, it's it's a bit of an odd choice, but an exciting one. So. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, Andrew was very interested in doing it, and I liked his uh, his party philosophy, obviously. And uh, he's uh, very into uh, performing, and uh, he's he's intelligent, and uh, he likes to uh, experiment. And uh, I like the way he does the Ramon songs vocally. And I was very uh, surprised uh, how well the band gels with him. If you were to ask a, a classic punk rock fan, I, I'm sure if they, if you ask them, well, who do you think would be the singer for this? You know, they might bring up Richard Hell, you know, who you've worked with. or it's too old. <laughs> or, or maybe a Jello Biafra. Or no, no. That would be a little strange. Yeah, not But interesting. Thing. But I think the, the consensus right now with Andrew W.K. is like, this is just crazy enough to work. That's what I wanted. I, I didn't want a Joey clone. I didn't want, um, you know, I didn't want, and even my band members, I didn't want guys twirling around, jumping up and all that stuff and playing ten times as fast as they should, as they, you know, should. And um, I just wanted it to be a fun uh, situation and uh, just play the songs that I feel are too good not to be played. And, you know, talking about Andrew W.K., you mentioned his party philosophy. In uh, a press release about this tour, you said that his party philosophy has always been your exact take on life. Definitely. You live one day at a time, enjoy it as if it's your last day. Um, I, I've known too many people who have succumbed to, to cancer. Uh, three of my former bandmates, Joey, Johnny, and Didi, are gone. Uh, Johnny Thunders, Jerry Nolan, who were friends of mine, they're gone. So, you know, you, gotta, you have to get rid of the petty, petty uh, animosities towards your friends and other people. Let that shit go and enjoy your lives. You're about to release an autobiography. Mm -hmm. uh, My Life is a Ramon, coming out in September. Uh, and, you know, there have been so many documentaries and biographies of the Ramones over yeah. the years. So. Yeah. What is it that you're going to be offering the fans here that has never been offered before? The truth, no hearsay, no exaggerations. I'm, I'm a Ramon writing a book, not a family member. Uh, family members were not allowed in the nucleus of the Ramones. My book is my life. So as a little kid, auditioning for the dolls, my first band, Dust, Wayne County and the Backstreet Boys, uh, hanging out in Max's, Kansas City, then Richard, me and Richard meeting up, and uh, Bob Klein forming the Vaudoids, doing the Blank Generation album, then joining the Ramones, and then working with Phil Spector, the real truth behind that. And, uh, you know, I don't want to bust anyone's bubble, but Phil never pointed a gun at us in the studio. Oh, no. That, that's bullshit. Sorry, but he didn't. But people need to sell books, so they'll put that in there. There were only four people allowed in the studio. That was the band. The tour manager, any, the roadies weren't allowed in. Phil was, was secretive. The less people in the studio, the better. The only time the road manager came, was allowed in was when he came there to pick us up to take us back to the hotel. He might have pulled a gun at a different occasion when they met him, uh, <laughs> when they were probably uh, feeling him out about producing End of the Century. 
But in the studio, he never pulled a gun. And uh, I think in one of the documentaries, Johnny Ramon goes, Phil, what are you going to do, shoot me? Yeah. He wasn't pointing a gun at him. He knew he had guns on him. That's right. a so, big, big difference. Yeah, so that legendary story yeah, of him bullshit. holding you hostage is yeah, bullshit. Yeah, yeah, bullshit. No hostage. You know what I mean? That's such uh, a great story, though. You know, <laughs> he, he, he did take away the keys from our road manager, and he didn't want us to leave uh, his... Uh, his, uh, the, the studio, because uh, he felt it was time he want, we wanted to do more work, but the day was over. So uh, we were exhausted, and then uh, Phil went up to the road manager and demanded the keys, and the road manager didn't give it to him because he was worried because the insurance was on remo on, on us, of so the van. Who knew what Phil would have did with the van? I don't think nothing, but who knows what would have went on in his mind. That's the only thing I really saw that was aggressive on Phil's end of, of being predatory towards the, the road manager. But uh, it never happened. There were no guns. And the only reason why he made uh, Johnny Ramon do that chord for the beginning of Rock and Roll High School was not to bust his balls, but was to get a sustain in the chord that he was looking for. So that's what's going to be in my book. And the Rock and Hall of Fame, what happened that night, and the, the Grammy Awards that, 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 I just got, that, that we received, and the MTV Awards, and all the bands now that are, <clears throat> that are taking the Ramones sound and putting their icing on the cake. And I know that you played on Joey Ramone's uh, debut solo record, mm -hmm. uh, Don't Worry About Me. Yeah. And last year, suddenly, all of these missing songs were kind of found and compiled together. Yeah, they were rejects off of the first solo album, and they were songs Joey didn't want out. They were just on cassettes. And, uh, you know, obviously, you know... Uh, you know, the uh, family member, the sibling, wants to perpetuate Joey's, uh, you know, whatever. That's Mickey, right? Yeah. Uh, Mitchell Hyman, Joey's okay. brother. And uh, to his image, you know, it was uh, whatever, Legacy. Uh, wasn't a good album. And uh, that's why they weren't used on the first album. So, I mean, uh, it's like, enough's enough. Let the guy rest in peace and have his good stuff out there, not the secondary stuff that well, wasn't too good. Yeah, his brother does have a bit of re a reputation in that sense of kind of using Joey's image for his of own game. Of course, I mean, I mean, look, that's human nature. It, you know, I mean, the guy struggled all his life to make it, and a lot of people considered him mediocre, including Lester Bangs. Lester would say, I go to Lester, why did you have uh, him in the band? He goes, oh, he's Joey's brother. I go, is he good? He goes, ah, mediocre. So, you know, I mean, there will always be a sibling or a family member that will attach themselves to the star of the family or of a, you know, whatever, a brother or a, to this or that. But uh, that's human nature because that person feels they could get something out of it to to uh, uh, maybe get some kind of record deal or tour, but it's not going to happen. Right. You know. But uh, look, I, I wish everybody luck, but we're, we're being honest and truthful here. So, I mean, um, that's why the, the first album that Joey and I did together blows that one away. I mean, Wonderful World. That's, Beautiful. That's the hit. Amazing. And, and, and we didn't even write the song. That song was the main song of that album. That, if that song wasn't on that album, it wouldn't have been as good. Me and Joey discussed it. I said, let's Ramones it up. Let me play the fast beat to it instead of doing it this uh, six-eighths way that, that Louis Armstrong did it. Let's do it four-four Ramones style. So that's what we ended up doing. Yeah, Joey, and I, I love that cover so much. Joey's voice is it's great. amazing. Joey's great in it. Totally. Joey's great in it. <laughs> So, uh, you know, your pasta sauce. Yeah. What, that's actually very widely available, especially here in New York. 
I what can't. Is... I can't believe how it's spread out. I mean, it's <laughs> it's in L. I go to L. A. It's there. It's in Chicago. It's in Gourmet Garage here. It's in Long Island. It's in DBGBs. But get, 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 get to what you you were asking. <laughs> Say, Sorry to get off the subject. <laughs> what is it about your pasta sauce that kicks the ass of the pregos and Bertolis of the world? Well, we were number two in the Wall Street Journal. Rayos was first. Uh, I don't read the Wall Street Journal, but it was brought to my attention. So I said, well, I guess if the suits like it and they have choices, I guess that's pretty good. Uh, it has uh, a certain ingredient. When I, my grandfather was one of the head chefs at the Copacabana and the 21 Club uh, in the f uh, 40s, 50s, and 60s. Copacabana uh, had people there, entertainers, mobsters. Uh, and he used to cook for Jackie Gleason. Jackie Gleason liked his steak an inch and a half thick. And I, uh, when I was asked to leave my parents' house, uh, the cheapest thing to make was, was spaghetti. I was eating dog food. L literally. Literally. Dog. My friend had a dog upstairs. He was moving out, you know, got rid of the dog, had the dog, had 24... Uh, cans of dog food, uh, but it was uh, a yuppie dog food, Himes. <laughs> it wasn't Alpo. You know, it was like the new yuppie thing. You know, pay an extra dollar for <laughs> the can. Not that store brand shit. So this so. is what happened. I get the dog food, and I, I knew how to cook. But, I, you know, I had my seasoning. I had my salt, my pepper, whatever, you know, the, um, uh, the hot pepper. I, I would put olive oil in a pan, fry it up a little, throw the dog food in, put salt, some pepper around it, put maybe some uh, some onions, and it tasted great. <laughs> I didn't bark after I ate it, but it tasted great. So I ate that for a few days. I didn't get sick, and I said, if it's good enough for Lassie, it's good enough for me. Uh, and there's no dog food in the pasta sauce. Again. No, there's no dog food. There's no dog food in there. No, not at all. Times have changed. <laughs> um, so when you were inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2002, uh, you had Eddie Vedder from Pearl Jam right. uh, induct you. Yeah. So I was wondering if you got the chance to induct anyone personally, who would that be? I don't know. That's a good question. I've never thought about that. Uh, hmm. Who who uh, who do I think should be in? Well, that that too. Uh, who would you love to hand that trophy off to? I'd love to hand it to Lemmy from Motorhead. He the fucking deserves it. It's true. He deserves it. They belong in there, and so does Kiss. Kiss too. I'd Kiss. love to give Peter Chris. Uh, a long overdue Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductee award. You know, I mean, eventually, hopefully, they'll get in. You know, I vote. So uh, if their name comes up, I will vote for them. And Motorhead definitely deserves to be in there. And if not the band, Lemmy. Am I allowed to, are you allowed to say whether or not you voted for Deep Purple last time around? I, pro uh, I probably did, yeah. They deserve it. Yeah. They deserve it because they were one of the creators of metal. In, in the sound, <clears throat> because of uh, the guitar playing, uh, the Stratocaster, the way he played guitar, and just, just, just the drum sound, the Ian Pace is great. So, I mean, then you have Black Sabbath, who really uh, took, took it further with the sound, and they solidified metal in England. And then... Here, uh, six months later, I came to America. Thanks so much for taking Thank some you. time to talk to me. Dust. 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 There you go. Go buy a You want Dust. American metal? Check out Dust. Out April 16th. Get that. Be sure to see Marky Ramone's Blitzkrieg featuring Andrew W.K. on May their 3rd. tour. Starting May 3rd. At Santo's House Party. Absolutely. That's, that's a, a club that Andrew is involved with. Right. So that's why we wanted to do it there as a warm-up show for our big tour coming up. Yeah. And, of course, pick up Marky's book in September when it comes out, The Truth.
yep. is in the pages. I should have called it that, but, <laughs> you know. So, thank you so much. Thank you. Mark, you're a hey, Thanks a lot.